One man who's been trying to convey that message for a very long time now had some successes, had some failures, had some ups, had some downs, some highs, some lows, is a man called Tommy Robinson, a.k.a. Stephen Yaxley Lennon, formerly the head of the English Defence League, uh, a, a movement that was founded to draw attention to a Pakistani Muslim grooming and rape scandal that was taking place all across the United Kingdom that the establishment said wasn't happening. And what did the establishment do? What did the media do? What did the politicians do when, when, when Tommy and his buddies decided to start speaking out about what was going on in their communities to their young female friends, sisters, uh, uh, wives, girlfriends, mothers? What, what, what did they do? They didn't pay attention. They didn't investigate. They didn't go up there. They didn't send down their crack investigative journalist teams. They pointed fingers at Tommy and called him far-right racist, extremist, xenophobe, bigot, etc., etc. All the things, by the way, that you guys get called. I think now they have one word for it. It's deplorable, right? But... Tommy, I'm glad that you're joining us here today, uh, live in London, because, and by the way, we, we, we didn't get on a plane because of what the president tweeted yesterday. We just so happened to be here at the same time. And you're somebody not, not just who knows about this issue and who's been through all this, and you even went through your own sort of reckoning with yourself and with your old movement. But you've also dealt with Britain first before. You've sat down with these people. You've interviewed these people. You've been to their rallies, their marches. You've, you've seen the types of people they're attracting. So let's, let, let's start off with this. And by the way, Tommy's got an excellent book you should get. It's called Muhammad's Quran. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Muhammad's Quran. It's, a, it's, it's, it's just this fantastic compendium of everything that's in the Quran that you don't get to hear about. And you want, guys, ladies and gentlemen out there, you want ammunition when you talk to your friends, to your family members, Thanksgiving, when you talk to your politicians, your legislators about this stuff and they say you're a kook, you're crazy, you don't know what you're talking about, give them a copy of Muhammad's Quran, set them straight. Tommy, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me on. Okay, first things first. Are you, are you a, a, a bigot, uh, ethno-nationalist, extremist, racist, xenophobe? Of course I'm not. Those are, words have come you're, up you're, you're, sta one you're, you're standing uh, uh, next to a, a, a brown man born into a Muslim family. Do you want to ball your fist up and punch <laughs> me? Is that, is, that, is, that, is that what they're trying to tell us? No, this, the this is the problem. They couldn't be further from the truth, and everyone knows that. You know where I'm from, Raheem. I'm from Luton Town. Luton is one of the most diverse and multicultural towns in Britain, in Europe. In Europe, actually. So I've grown through. I've watched the Islamic takeover of my town, but I'm also from a town full of immigrants. My mother was an immigrant to the UK, an Irish immigrant. Most of my friends are sons of immigrants, be it St. Lucian, Jamaican, Italian, Bulgarian. We're all sons of immigrants. Mm -hmm. I've watched and seen the problems. The problems don't come from different cultures coming into our country. They don't come from Sikhs coming into our country, Jews coming into our country. The one problem I've witnessed and watched through my hometown is the divisiveness and the segregation of the Islamic community. Mm. And then the problems that that brings. Mm. And you, and you, by the way, you also, you, you also drill down into. It's not. It's not. It's not. There's not one Islamic community, right? You've got Ahmadiyyas who are routinely persecuted by by Sunnis, by Diobandis, uh, by 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 Wahhabists. You've got you've got people like my parents, Ismaili Muslims. Incredibly, I mean, these are these are these are just capitalists, right? All they want to do is work hard, uh, 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 pay some bills, pay some taxes in as much as anybody wants to pay taxes and just and, and, and raise kids and have and so you know that that's and you've you've pointed this out by the way I've watched I think every single interview you've done Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Right? So the biggest problem... And you point this out, but yeah. they cut it up, and no, they, they don't let you talk. They cut up, and we, they continue like they're sending out anti-Muslim tweets, mm. anti-Muslim. I don't talk about Muslims. Mm. I talk about Islam. Right. I talk about the ideology, the scripture, the book. I talk about the Prophet Muhammad, I talk, or the, the false Prophet Muhammad. I, I talk about him, and I talk about... And when we look at different sects, yes, you're right, Salafists, Wahhabists, Diabandis. Diabandis are the fastest growing sect in the UK. You just, by the way, you just committed a hate crime live on air. Of course. There's a false prophet, Muhammad, by the way, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, can get you banged up here in the United can get you locked up here in the United Kingdom for saying, I, I'm genuine. That's Islamophobia as far as the establishment's concerned. No, you're right. You're right. You're speaking about
about this issue is Islamophobia. Yeah. That's it. Knowing too much about this issue, issue means you're Islamophobic. Yeah. Jada Franson, the girl in question at, at the moment, she's facing a charge in Northern Ireland mm. for speaking about this issue. Mm. I watched her I watched her speech. Have you watched her speech? No. No, I watched her speech that she's faced, that faced arrest for. And do you know what it is? I, I faced nine years of harassment, persecution and arrest mm. for speaking about Islam. Mm. And I've seen exactly the same happen to Jada's, Jada and, uh, and Paul and that group. So I say, no matter what people agree with politics or groups or not, mm. we're, Brit we're in Britain. Mm. We have free speech, we have freedom of assembly, and we should be free to do that. Mm. But I, I understand now, the country I thought I lived in when I first started my activism is a very different country to, that I now accept we live in. Mm. We live in a post-free speech era, completely post-free speech era. It, it, it's a facade that we have free speech. Mm. And anyone who steps outside the status quo, they will throw, throw the full force of the media the, and the state, the establishment, at them to destroy them. Mm. They've gone out of their way not to destroy me, but to destroy every member of my family for my political beliefs and yeah. for the opposition I give to the Islamization of my country. Right. But, but okay, so look... The, the, the Soros guys are listening to this show right now. They do every morning, right? The Media Matters guys, and they and and, and they and they um, they aggregate this show and they pull quotes uh, selectively. So let me let me let me um, put this to them right now. You're listening, Media Matters out there right now, and your heads are exploding because we've got Tommy Robinson here in our studio in London, and 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 I know how they're going to write about it, and and you know Breitbart hosts far right. Uh, uh, activist to talk about, you know, president tweeting far right activist, <laughs> you know, uh, far right, right circle jerk is happening right here on Breitbart News Daily. Uh, let's let's talk about that and then we'll move on to the Britain first stuff. I don't think, by the way, since I, I did a long interview with you a couple of years ago, by the way, I take some partial credit Mate, for you, you were, honing your media skills. You were one of the first people right. to sit down. And, right. You were one of the first people to... I, was, I went through a stage where everyone attacked me yeah. and no one gave me an opportunity. You were one of the first people to sit me down on camera and give me a fair, yeah. decent, let's talk about this. We did an hour long yeah. and it was mainly you speaking. <laughs> And, and most of this audience is like, oh, Raheem didn't speak? That's weird. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a talkative person. But, but you spoke for nearly an hour straight, told your whole story. We didn't cut it up. We didn't chop it up. We didn't dice it, slice it, you know, do all this sort of stuff. And I'm of the belief, by the way, that if you're giving somebody who's controversial in an in interview, you let them talk as long as possible because they will out themselves as a bigot or something in the you know if they are that way of course. and you did nothing to show that so media matters make sure you go back and watch that interview as well it's on youtube you can see that as well and figure out what uh, what tommy robinson is i don't think you have ever expressed really uh, as far as i can see you know any sort of right wing tendencies I think of you, and you correct me if I'm wrong, I think of you as, you know, an issues-based person, not, not a political spectrum person. I'll be honest with you, I was as, as embarrassing as it is, when I started the English Defence League, I didn't know what left-wing and right-wing were. Mm. I didn't understand politics or have any interest. Like most working-class people in the UK, mm. I was working on a building site and I didn't care for politics at all. I started opposing what was immediately affecting my family, their life, my town, my future, our country. Mm. And that was Islam. I've never ever strayed into any other political debate mm. because I'm not that interested. In fact, uh, what, most of my views are very liberal. Mm. I'm a very liberal... Liberg well, liberal. Well, 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 classical liberal for yeah. the American yeah, audience. Yeah, classical liberal, yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm not... Uh, my, my problem stems from Islam, and so it's that people have an understanding of where I'm from. I'm from a town called Luton that's 30 miles north of London. Luton was the launch, po launch pad for the 7-7 bomb plot. It was the launch pad for the fertiliser bomb plot, the Stockholm bomber. We've had, just last year, um, we've had about seven different separate terrorist organiser, uh, terror, terrorist groups in the last 18 months. One of them for planning to behead an American soldier. Mm. When, I, when I was born in Luton, there was one mosque. There's now 30. Wow. Oh, yeah. I've seen, I've, how, how big is Luton. Uh, Luton's a population of 200,000 people. And there's 30 mosques. There's 30 mosques. What's, 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 what's the geographical size of Luton, do you know? Um, I don't. We'll know. find that out, because that's extraordinary. Mm. And, and what it is, and they're all in one area. They're, they're, well, that area's just grown and grown and grown. And when I talk about the, the makeup of Luton, Luton has 30,000 Irish, 30,000 Polish. Eng white English are a minority in Luton. That's, that, that's my wow. background. White English are, are, are a minority in England, wow. in, in Luton. And I've watched and seen all of the problems from the gang rapes, from the two tier policing system. So the things I talk about, and this is the problem with the groups who oppose us, or the, or, or the liberals or the left, that they're not talking about life experience. I'm not talking about what I'm reading in my book yeah. or reading in the book. Yeah. I'm talking about I've seen this happen, I've seen that happen, I've seen the policing system, I've seen the unfair funding system, I've watched it all, I've seen the way that we as white working class um, 
working class community in the town have become completely irrelevant because of the way that it, the Islamic community organise themselves and orchestrate themselves for the block vote. Uh, and the Labour Party... Let's are, talk about that. Yeah. Sadiq Khan is the uh, Muslim mayor of London. Came into power on the crest of, 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 of media approbation, applause. Isn't it wonderful? London's got its first Muslim mayor. No, by the way, no question about whether he was suited for the job. Right? Just, just, he's Muslim, so it's great. Right? Um, now, this man this morning has said that President Trump is not welcome in the United Kingdom, even though, by the way, he's the mayor of London. He can probably get away with saying at a push, he's not welcome in London. He says he's not welcome in the United Kingdom. He says it's a, it's, it's a betrayal of the US-UK relationship that he retweeted these videos yesterday. He said uh, it, it beggars belief that the president of our closest ally doesn't see that his support of this extremist group actively undermines the values of tolerance and diversity that makes Britain so great. If that isn't out of the George Soros handbook, I don't know what is, by the way. It's funny to say, because I've actually been going through the politicians. For example, David Lammy, who's a, who's a black politician in London. He's come out saying exactly the same. He's not welcome in his country, in his city. Now, when you go through um, David Lammy's fi financial things, he has money coming in from George, George Soros. Mm -hmm. I think, I feel, as an Englishman, watching what's currently gone on in the last 24 hours, with the comments from politicians and the media, mm. I've seen all of it, mm. I feel completely embarrassed. Yeah. I feel completely embarrassed. Yeah. I compl feel completely embarrassed that the American public must be watching this and I, I want them to understand that the majority of the British people do not feel the way that it's being pushed and the agenda that's being driven on the media, by politicians, by the press, by, the, by, by everyone. We don't feel that at all. Uh, and, and uh, yeah, I, I feel completely embarrassed by it. And when we talk about... How do you feel, how do you feel about <laughs> Theresa May and Downing Street's response to this? They're saying, they're saying that this was wrong, that the president shouldn't have done this. Theresa May is basically throwing the whole Brexit thing under the bus over virtue signalling, as far as I'm concerned, because we need a UK-US trade deal completely. for Brexit to work. Yeah, they're risking and our she, future. She, and, she, so, but, but, and, and, and why are they risking our future? For what? What does it get her? It gets her nothing. It gets her nothing. It gets her brownie points. And it gets her. So, Ther Theresa May. Is that a racial statement? Brownie points? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, hey, um, Media Matters, did you get that one? <laughs> it's, um, it's embarrassing. And when we talk about. I, I, when I, was on, I was on a radio interview this morning with two journalists, and they started talking about these tweets. Yep. And I asked them, when was the last terror attack prevented in the UK? Yep. And they both said they don't know. Yeah. I said, well, let me tell you when it was. It was prevented two days ago. Wow. Okay? Two days ago, after a man in London and a man in Birmingham were arrested, they were arrested in their la later preparations of a terrorist attack. Do we know what they were, where they were trying to do? What no, it's a at? sophisticated... All we know yeah. is come out, it's a sophisticated attack. Wow. Now, when you hear that, so I say, why, why is the rest of our country not up in arms mm. about that that's happening every week? In the last seven months, we've had four terrorist attacks, killing children, um, stabbing women in their throat in restaurants, mm. lorry attacks. That's in the last seven months. We've had eight, eight attacks prevented in the last seven months. Mm. Now, rather than being on the high horse or Theresa May talking about this and talking mm. about stopping this, we're talking about tweets which showed videos of evidence. You know when this come out and we, we keep hearing that it, we, we, from the media they say, to, uh, Jay DeFranson alleged the man was a Muslim. Mm. This is the man who's got the Virgin Mary trophy. Mm. It took me five minutes to verify where that video's from. Wow. And then it took me another five minutes to translate everything the man's saying. Wow. Now the man's saying that I'm doing this for Islam, for Allah, for the takeover, because they're idolaters, because it's Christianity. Mm. This was in Syria. So it took five minutes, but yet our media still say, Jay DeFranson alleges he's a Muslim. Mm. No, he is a Muslim. Mm. And yes, they were Muslims and they were throwing people off the rooftop because they were moderates, because of the Muslim Brotherhood. And the reason why that's more relevant is that Barack Obama supported the, 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 supported the implementation of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. So this was an uprising in 2013 that Donald Trump has retweeted, mm. where your previous president was part and parcel of the reason those men were being thrown off the rooftop. And, and uh, by the way, this is not conspiracy theory, right, ladies and gentlemen? The These are facts. US State Department under Hillary Clinton and with Barack Obama as president, assisted the Muslim Brotherhood, not just there, by the way, not just in Egypt, all over North Africa, Middle East, in the United States of America as well. The Council on American Islamic Relations, Barack Obama literally went to Cairo and quoted from their press releases. This is a Muslim Brotherhood organization. That was your last president. So if you want to ask me the question, do I, would I rather the United, and I realize it's an English voice saying this, ladies and gentlemen, you'll forgive me. Would I rather the United States have a president that retweets something that two out of three are right and one is 
a wrong video. Is it a wrong video? <laughs> the Dutch one, I think, is. But he's still, he's a son of a migrant. What's wrong? Because all I'm hearing at the minute, there's no... Uh, wait, they, say, they say, they say, they say it was a Muslim kid attacking a non-Muslim kid. I don't think there's any evidence for that. There's no evidence for it. Is there any evidence countering that? Is there evidence to I, say I, that he's I, not Muslim? I, I believe there is. Is there? I believe there is. And, and we're getting, we're getting, we're getting into it on Breitbart it. London okay. at, the, at this point in time, and some other organizations are digging it. But even so, let's, let's take two-thirds right, okay? As, 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 as my favorite band, Fallout Boy, would say, two out of three ain't bad. You're asking me to pick a president that does that versus a president that emboldens a group that should be globally designated a terrorist organization that wants to overthrow Western civilization. You want me to pick which president I prefer? Guess which one I'm picking. I, I, I think what Donald Trump has done here has shone a massive torch again, which everything he does, I feel, does this, into the hypocrisy and what we're up against. He, ret he retweets. So our, our prime minister watches a video of men being thrown off a rooftop, of a Virgin Mary being smashed on the floor, and a mm. young boy being beaten up, mm. and she's talking about the far right. Uh, so let's so, t so tell me about well, let's go, let's take a call all right let's go to line one Dave in uh, in in Pennsylvania Dave good morning good morning Raheem and all you guys there hey uh the thing I don't really like about all this immigration of the Islamic countries is they're not here to assimilate they're here to dominate you know they're they're, they're not conforming to the laws in the countries they're going into they're forming their own little groups like those no-go zones like you talk about. I've yet to buy your book, though. But Come on, why, Dave. But why are we, why <laughs> is the country letting this happen? They ought to, okay. if they're not conforming to the laws in the country, kick them out. Get them, David, get them out David, of there. It's a great point. It's a great question. I'm going to throw it over to Tommy right now. Tommy, is it is it too much of a sweeping statement to say they're all not assimilating? Um Yes. Okay, but yes. so so let's let's walk through that. Yes. So some are, some aren't. Um, who is, who? Which which constituent groups are doing a good job? Which aren't doing a good job? Who do we need to be paying attention to? You're going up later on in the day up to nor the, the the north of England. You're 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 going to a, a neighbourhood which has a lot of non-integration, but it's a specific type. It's not it's not you know it's the, the, these aren't Arabs. This is a this this is a problem with the Dio Bandis. The Bangladeshis, the, the Pakistanis, yeah, the, the, so they do the Wahhabis, Salafis, the Obandi schools of Islam. I talk about it in my book, you talked about it at length. Just talk to us a little bit about what, what Dave is saying, because these people, by the way, are not just not integrating, they are convincing other non Wahhabi Salafist, Diobani Muslims to follow their suit. Yeah. What I'd say is, if I, if I bring it back to Luton again, so I've grown up in Luton and I've seen the divide, the complete non-integration and, and, and the general hostility towards non-Muslims by the members of the Muslim community. Then we have a town near Luton called Biggleswaid. Now Biggleswaid has no mosques, but there's a handful of Muslims. And when I speak to the, men, the English kids in Biggleswaid, they say, no, they're no problem at all. There's no, there's no problem, they're completely integrated with us. That's because there's no mosque, there's no Saudi influence. If you look at the Saudi influence in our wow. Yeah, if you, so, so, so they're getting on fine there where there's no mosque. Wow. Yeah, because they're not being taught to hate. They're not. So what I'd say. So, so here's the thing. I, just, I know I interrupt a lot, but you're saying things that are so powerful. You're saying you're not arguing it's an ethnic thing. You're not arguing it's ingrained in these people. You're saying there are malign influences that we've allowed into our countries that are taking these people out of British and out of American civil society and making them into something different. Planned and, that's planned and orchestrated. Planned and organized. Why does the BBC not talk about that? No, it's completely planned and organized. And I think if we look at the funding and where the money comes from for most of the mosques or the, or the problematic mosques, then we can see, we can see it's organized. For, it, this is where it goes, where, this is where it's so crazy. My, my local council, Labour Council, you're, you're, you're Democrats in mm. America. My Labour Council gave £140,000 funding to the Wahhabi Luton Islamic Centre. Mm. Now, the Luton Islamic Centre is it, called the Luton Islamic Centre, but if you go on the website, if you go on the internet and search their name, it's called the, it's called the Gula, where the, the word actually means the, pit, the Muslims who come into the country to take over. That's what they've called wow. their, their centre. Now, that was the centre from the Stockholm bomber. This was the centre where Khalid Massoud, the most recent Westminster attacker, he worked there. This is the centre where when, we, when I translated, what, what I done is took eight pages off their website and I translate, I got, a tran got them translated. Six pages were justification for lashing women. Mm. 
The other two pages were justification for killing homosexuals. This is on their mosque website, okay? Their mosque imam, finally now, he was part of my, part of my town's Luton in Harmony program. All these stupid diversity programs mm. that they have to try and pretend that everything's fine. Yeah? They let off a few balloons on once a year. The imam gets pictured with a priest and we all tell everyone we all love each other. Mm. Yeah? That, that's, that's this program. And the Qadir Bas, the leading imam, was part of this. I've battled for eight years to tell everyone who he is and what the mosque is and where the money's coming from, mm. how radical they are. Only now they've been exposed after an undercover investigation found that he was calling for Muslims to wage weapons ready for war against us. This is how big the problem is. Can I interject something in here real quick before I hang Yeah, up? Dave, real quick, real quick, because we've got to go to a break. 30 seconds. You know, I'm still waiting for pictures to come out of Obama down on his knees on a prayer rug with that little beanie cap on. Because I really do believe that he is actually a Muslim. Well, I don't, know about, I don't know about all that, Dave, but I do know that he was certainly prostrate to Islam, if not to Allah. <laughs> you know, Dave in Pennsylvania, thank you so much for the call here on Breitbart News uh, Daily. Tommy, just before we have to go, uh, talk about your book. So, the book, if you pick up the Quran, a Quran is encrypted. One thing Muhammad said one day is that next sunk, he said ten years later. So, so you're saying it's not in chronological order? It's not in chronological okay. order, as, as any great war manual wouldn't be. Right. Yeah? It's not in chronological order, it's an encrypted book, so it needs decoding. Now, what we, what we realize is that in the early 1900s, the Quran that you would buy in the UK, for example, when Winston Churchill read the Quran, or Sir William, Sir William Gladstone read the Quran, the Quran was in chronological order. They've all gone now. Yeah? Oh, wow. It was in chronological order. So, so, we, so, so they were reading a different Quran? They're reading a different Quran. Wow. Yeah, and I pr this is all proven in the book. So yeah. you, previous American prime, min pr uh, prime ministers, but Sir William Gladstone presidents, so Sir William Gladstone held the Quran above his head in Parliament, yeah. and he said, there will never be peace on this earth so long as we have this book. Wow. This book is a violent curse book. Wow. Now, all of this is put in the book, but what we've done is, because of abrogation, anyone who understands Islam, whatever Muhammad said later in his life supersedes what he said earlier. Mm -hmm. Now, if the book's all muddled up, then we get this interpretation argument all the time. Mm. When you put it in chronological order, you then see... That, uh, uh, what we've done is we've worked through, so when you get to the peaceful verses, which are now at the back of the Quran, because in Muhammad's first ten years of his life, he was very peaceful, mm. and, and that's, when he, that's when the peaceful verses are from. Mm. Then he introduced piracy, war, rape, murder, jihad, mm. and that's where all the extreme verses from. Now, when it's put into chronological order, when you get to the peaceful verses, we've literally put a little line through them, and it tells you which one abrogates them. So mm. then you can, it's the first book that you can look through, and you, uh, you can then understand the context of Islam, because when we've done it back to front, uh, the first page, and it's a full Quran, along with the instruction, that when you get to the first page of the Quran, it's, it's basically, kill them. The last thing Muhammad said, Surah 95, kill the non-Muslims wherever you find them. Wow. Tommy Robinson, we've got to leave it there. I wish I could talk to you all day, and I'm sure the audience feel very similar about it as well. That's Muhammad's Quran, by the way, that you can pick up on Tom, Amazon. You can pick up on TommyRobinson.com. TommyRobinson.com. Or Muhammad's, Muhammad's Quran. Yeah, Muhammad's hyphen Quran. And, uh, and uh, we will be right back here on Breitbart News Daily, live from London in the United Kingdom after this short break.